welcome to the first of my Where Are They Now series for 2017. We're still going back four years in time to revisit my favorites from the very same month four years ago. But this year, we're going back to 2013. So let's see what I was into in January of 2013. For those of you that are new to this concept, I do have a playlist where I have gone through all of them and I basically just explained what it is that I do. I also encourage anyone who makes YouTube videos to please consider doing this. It's great that you share your favorites with us every month, but then where do they go when you're done? So I have printed out my description box from way back then and I'm just gonna run through it real quickly. If I'm still using it, I'll let you know. And if I'm not, I'll let you know what I'm doing in its place. So the first thing I talk about is Hue Hidden Sock Liners. Now I have to say, full disclosure, I did not actually go back and watch that video. It's painful for me to watch myself. It's bad enough I have to watch it when I edit these videos, but then to sit back and watch another video with me in it, it's just, it's weird. It's weird to see yourself Anyway, so I don't know why I was talking about these in January because right now I am freezing and I would like full on wool socks, but I still wear them. But I have found that Target carries a lot more of them and better price point. So I will link to the Target socks I prefer to wear. Then the next favorite was the Inspector Gamache Mystery Series by Louise Penny. And I'm happy to tell you, still a favorite. This is the latest one that was released um, summer, I believe, of 2016. This is the latest in that series, A Great Reckoning, and it was a great, great book. I do have a tab at the top of my website, missgoldgirl.com, that says bookshelf. If you click on that, you'll see all the books I've been reading in the last year or so, and it gets updated as I read new books. So I just wanted to put that out there if you need some book recommendations. Okay, next was the original Kindle, speaking of. I still have it, I think it's upstairs. I think I gave it to one of the kids to use. I pretty much read everything on my iPad now. It's not ideal if you're sitting outside in direct sunlight. I, I prefer the iPad because it lights up and then I can read it at night and not have the overhead light on and not bother Michael who's trying to sleep next to me. Then I talk about the Caudalie Vin Vino Source SOS Thirst Quenching Serum. Um, used that up, went through two or three bottles, loved it, and then, like most of us who make beauty videos here on YouTube, found something else to play with. And um, most of my, most, not all, but most of my skincare these days in the last, I don't know, two, maybe three years now has been from Colleen Rothschild. Is it any surprise that so is the serum I use? Now, do I use this all the time? No. It sits on my counter where I do my makeup and it's like three days out of seven when I remember to do this. I will put a pump of the Colleen Rothschild Super Serum, Age Renewal Super Serum in with my moisturizer. It does all kinds of things to fight the signs of aging. That's great. It would probably work better for me if I remembered to use it consistently. But um, this is my second bottle, so I do like it. But I just, I get to a point where I'm like, oh, how much stuff do I need to put on my face? But if you like a nice serum that does all the things that the Caudalie did, give this one a shot. It's great. Okay, then I talk about two nail polish shades, Zoya Jacqueline and Zoya Julie. I still have them both in my collection. Zoya Julie was a really pretty, very lavender, pale lavender shade. Jacqueline is sort of a bone white, opaque cream shade. I'm kind of off the, the nude nail look, although this is pretty nude, but it's chrome, so it's cool. But the dead hand, I'm over it. And the lavender, maybe in the springtime, to me that screams April, March, not dead of winter. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of like, I don't know what I want to do with my nails. I'm kind of in a weird zone, but that's a whole different video. Then I talked about the MAC Prep and Prime Transparent Finishing Powder. That phase didn't last very long. It's very dusty. It goes everywhere. It's a pain in the tushy to apply. So when I do set my under eye concealer, which is pretty much every day these days, I do reach for this. Um, and I bought this a while back in one of the Sephora sales, and it's the Guerlain Meteorites, um, the pearls in the translucent, mm, smells like violets, translucent shade, and it's so pretty. I mean, come on, this container, gorgeous. Anyway, so yeah, it's shade two, Claire. That's what I use. Honestly, no better delivery system than the little fine powder, because if you spill those balls, they go everywhere, but I like it. Um, then I talked about the Beauty Blender, which is still, I don't know if this is the same, I hope it's not the same one. Eh, 
Yeah, it's probably the same one. I've added at least one more to my collection. I rarely reach for the Beauty Blender. I know so many people prefer using this to put their foundation on. I go in phases, but more often than not, let's face it, every time I use foundation, I use a brush. And my style of brush is a flat top kabuki brush. I get asked this all the time, so here it is. And here's one of the ones that's in rotation. It's from It Cosmetics, and it is, what is it? It's the Heavenly Luxe Flat Top Buffing Foundation Brush. There you go. That's what I like, and you just, I don't like putting it directly on the brush. I like putting it on the back of my hand, dotting it all over my face, and then st like stippling and buffing, and stipple and buff. There you go. Then I talk about the Sigma Mr. Bunny Travel Set. I don't, I almost use none of those brushes anymore. I do use the cup holder thingy that I came with a lot. But the actual, there's a lot of brushes in that set and I've simplified kind of the way I do, I know it doesn't seem like it, but I have simplified my application of makeup and I don't use all of those brushes. If you're into all that stuff, it's still a great value for money. I love Sigma brushes and we'll get to that in a minute. I do use them more often than almost any, or as much as any other brand that I reach for. But that particular set, not so much. So I'm looking at my list and it's talking about the Sigma E55 eyeshader brush. I don't, I didn't grab it. I don't really reach for it. Maybe that's why I didn't grab it. If I'm using an eyeshader brush, I didn't grab it to show you, but I, without fail, prefer to use the MAC 239 shader brush. It's the best one out there. It's my favorite. I prefer it over the Sigma options. That's all there is to it. Sigma E40 tapered blending brush was a favorite in 2013. Guess what? still is. Now even though I prefer the MAC brush, the MAC flat shader brush over the Sigma one, the reverse is true for this kind of brush. The MAC 224 is the version of the Sigma E40. I hate the 224. It's scratchy. It doesn't blend like I want it to. I don't get it. But the Sigma version, the E40, lovely, soft, like cashmere. I used it today in my crease to lay out kind of the transition diffused shade. Yeah, I could blend a little bit more there. Okay, so I still use it, still love it all the time. Um, the Sigma F30 Large Powder Brush. It's somewhere in my house. I'd have to dig through my collection. I reached for a brush that I initially did not like. Um, it's from Real Techniques, but it's their metal line, which I still, the handle escapes me why it's, I mean, I guess it's nice that it's not actually round. It won't go rolling off your countertop. It's the F, I think it's F, or 100 powder brush, as you can see, I use it. What I actually like about it is that you don't just, you know, go like that all over your face. You kind of just pat it and lay the powder down. And I like that. It doesn't move my makeup around. So this is what I reach for to put on my powder. I love the Real Techniques blush brush way back then. I don't know what I loved it for. I still like it, but not for blush. Um, it's too big. The, the head of it is like this big. You don't want your blush to cover the entire side of your face. I mean, let's say you have a huge head, which is nice. Um, models generally have larger heads, but um, I don't. So I like it for powder as a backup, or bronzer is what I prefer. It's very fluffy, so the bronzer is diffused nicely. What I do use for blush, which is why I grabbed this, is the Real Techniques Multitask Brush, which is part of a set, and see how it just, only the cheek, ding. Just like that, that's what I use. And then I went on to talk about my love for the Real Techniques setting brush. I was really into brushes in January of 2013. What was going on then? I don't know. But um, still use it, still love it. I pulled it out of my dirty cup holder, which coincidentally was from the Mr. Bunny travel set. Um, and I do use this to set under the eye and do a lot of other things. When this is dirty, like it is right now, I reach for this guy, the Wayne Goss Brush 02. It's the only Wayne Goss brush I own. I, it came in a kit I bought, like a, one of those not a subscription box, but kind of, and um, it's so much softer, <laughs> I have to say. Like, it, I mean, it is way more expensive, but it is so, oh my gosh. Oh, it is so soft, and I, I use this for setting my under eye powder, my under eye concealer, and I use this for con um, highlighter. Oh, wow. I really should probably get more of these. The Tarte Emphasize Aqua Gel Liner in Brown was a favorite. I don't use gel liner anymore. And in tandem with that was the Sigma E65 small angle brush, which I still have, this guy, which I use now more for like if I'm ever gonna like do any kind of powder stuff, 
with um, eyebrow work. I, do, I use this guy, but gel liner, I ain't got time for that. Like, I'm sorry, no. I just shh, pencil, move on. Those of you who use gel eyeliner, props to you. I just, I can't. Um, then I talked about two eyeliners, both from Steel, the Smudge Stick Eyeliner in Tetra and Moray. I actually ordered another, I think it was in Tetra, ordered another one during the Sephora VIB sale because I'm looking for that perfect brownish burgundy, like a purpley reddish brown, um, and realized I already had one from back then, so I returned it. They dried up and it's still not the exact shade I'm looking for. And what I'm looking for is from Estee Lauder and I'm just gonna, it had been out of stock. I'm gonna, it's burgundy. The Estee Lauder Double Wear Eyeliner in burgundy and that's what I'm gonna order this week actually. So um, don't use those. And then um, a couple more items, the NYX eyeshadow in rust. Don't reach for that at all anymore. I don't even know where that is. If I want a rust eyeshadow, I go for one of two palettes, three things, uh, two are palettes, either the Tartlet in Bloom Hard to tell in this light, but there's a bunch of rust shades down in this, down in this area. And then uh, if you want some serious rusty shades, we have all of these in the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. Definite rusty brown, coppery shades there. And then, did I forget to bring it with me? Of course I did. It was sitting on my dresser and I left it in the bed, I left it alone. Um, the L'Oreal Infallible Eyeshadows. Uh, I think it's Amber Rush, gorgeous, beautiful, rusty shade. That's the one I reach for before I even reach for those two. So there you go. And then um, two more, MAC Blush and Well Dressed. I still have it. Here it is. I kind of forgot I had it. So I need to pull this out and play with it some more. But when I do want this sort of light pinky shade, um, I reach for this guy instead. This is from Clinique. It's their Cheek Pop in Pink Pop. I like how you just get right to the point. Pink pop. I like it. it ha it's a little less flat than the well-dressed. Not Well-dressed is not matte, but this has a tiny bit more sheen to it, which is what I like. It's personal preference in my blush. And then the last thing gives me a little chuckle. It's a lip gloss. And I think the last time I've talked about lip gloss was probably 2013. I just got off lip gloss. Maybe it's because I was spending a lot more time outside and the wind is blowing and the lip gloss and the hair is not a good mix, but I just, it's easy to reach for a tube of lipstick. But I kind of started getting back into it just very slowly. I realized one of my favorites from 2016, the Clinique Lip Lacquer is essentially a lip gloss. This is in Cake Pop. And then I had, um, I don't know where this came from. It might've been the QVC advent calendar. This is from Bare Minerals. It's their Marvelous Moxie Lip Gloss in the shade Rebel, which I'm wearing now. And I really, I mean, isn't this a pretty color? I really, really like it. I keep looking in the monitor because I'm like, oh, this is pretty. Um, so I don't know, maybe I will branch out to lip gloss. The lip gloss I mentioned, I should say, was the Revlon Color Burst Lip Gloss in Rose Pearl. Let's take a moment of silence and mourn for the loss of the Revlon Color Burst line, shall we? I miss those lipsticks. The, um, the quilted, the lip butters, the original lip glosses. Revlon, why? You had a good thing going there. I think Revlon has never come back from that. Like Revlon was all over the internet when they had those color burst lip butters and the original lip glosses. And when they got rid of that, have we ever heard about Revlon since? Really? No. That was kind of the death of Revlon on YouTube. Hmm. Just saying, bring it back, Revlon. Bring it back. Anyway, that's it for my favorites from January 2013. Where are they now? Most of them are kind of still around. I'd say about half, maybe more than half. Anyway, if you do these videos, please tag me and let me know. I would love to have a watch. If you know of a YouTuber that doesn't, tell them to do it. Harass them. I want to watch a lot of these. I love, I want to see what happened to everybody's collections. Um, Anyway, I hope you enjoy these. Like I mentioned, there is a playlist and I will put it in a card and I will put it in the description box and I will also link to the original video in the description box below if you wanna have a little chuckle and see if anything's changed in the four years since I first put this one up. Thank you so much for watching. Can't wait to read your comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.